I want you to go to Job chapter 35. We're going to look at two verses and then never look at them again. But Job chapter 35, there is an amazing truth, an amazing truth uh, in Job chapter 35 that we're going to look at. Now, I, I'm sure this will not surprise you, but I am not, uh, I am, not only am I not a fan, I am an antagonist of the it's all about me generation. We have got a generation, uh, you know, they're like three years old. People says, you're a champion. At what? <laughs> Fill in a diaper? I mean, what did the kid do? <laughs> you're very valuable. No, you're not. Let's say grind you up for dog food and that wouldn't be much. And, and you know, they walk around there with a t-shirt. It's all about me. I saw this little kid. I don't blame even the kid. It was some stupid grandmother bought it. Uh, a t-shirt. Let's focus on me. And I thought, let's not. <laughs> And we are in a generation where literally everybody thinks that they're the most important person on the planet. And everything that happens is about me and everything that we, I'm not going to do anything if I don't benefit from it. And surely you want me to succeed as much as I do because you know how great I am. And so I'm, I am deaf. I am absolutely deaf on that concept that it is all about you, all about me. That being said, and this is not a semantical thing. This, you ever hear a sermon title? You say, oh man, I want to hear that. When you heard it, you thought, why did he give it that title? It didn't go anywhere near what he said. you know. But let me tell you the, the, the title of this message tonight. It really is all about you. And I'm going to show you from the Bible that everything is all about you. Okay. And it's not a semantical thing. Uh, it, it really is true. I want you to uh, <clears throat> look at two amazing verses. This is Elihu. Elihu's been the kind of the uh, observer uh, on this. You have Job, uh, and then you know he has all these problems, and then you have his three friends, Larry, Curly, and Mo, uh, and they show up. Um, I don't know if you ever thought about it, but Job's trials are over at the end, of chap about the middle of chapter two, uh, chapter two, about around verse fifteen. And if these three guys hadn't shown up, your Bible would be 40 chapters shorter. It would. They, they're, the, they're the guys. And, and so these guys are going back and forth, and Elihu's writing all this down. And look what he says here. He says an amazing thing in verse 6. If thou sinnest, we all do. If thou sinnest, what doest thou against him? Or if thy transgressions be multiplied, what, what dost thou unto him? He's saying, you sin. God's in heaven, right? Sitting on the throne. And he's omnipotent, and he's omniscient, and all those omnis. <laughs> and he says, when you sin, how are you hurting him? What do you do? Throw rocks? Take a shotgun, shoot it in the sky? I'll get you. Look at the next one. If thou be righteous, what givest thou him? Or what receivest he of thine hand? Let's bow our heads. Let's talk to the Lord. Father, <clears throat> I know there's a message here, Father. I do. I know what the message is. And the problem is me conveying it to these folks. And so, God, uh, I know somebody prayed it earlier uh, when, when I was kneeling here. Somebody said, uh, make Gip's mind clear and get the message across. And, and that's what needs to be done, Father. What these people need, they came here for two reasons, God. They want something from you, and they want something from your book. And if they don't get it tonight, it will be my fault. And I don't want their trip here to be wasted. They came to church on a Tuesday night. That means every single person in this room, there's something else they're usually doing at 7 o'clock on Tuesday night. And every one of these people said I'd rather be in church. So they did this for you. So God, I pray you will bless them for their attendance. And I just get the message across. Get, get out of their way and your way. And speak to the hearts of your people. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Uh, it says in verse 6, you can't do anything to hurt him. And it says in verse 7, you can't do anything to add to him. Right? That's an amazing truth. You know what that means? That means no one in this room can have a negative impact on God. You say, well, I'll burn a church. You burn a church. Uh, let me ask you a question. If you go burn a church, what will happen in heaven? Like they'll put black crepe on the door? Like the smoke will get up there and oh, must have burned another church. I mean, really. Uh, it, 
I'll go shoot a preacher. Uh, we'll go shoot one in another state right now, okay? But, um, uh, you know, I'll go hurt a preacher. Well, how are you hurting him? Guys, according to the Bible, there is nothing we can do in a negative way to hurt, hurt the Lord. Uh, I was in Norfolk, Virginia a couple of weeks ago, <coughs> and uh, one of the pastor, the pastor was a, uh, he was a E8 uh, in the Navy. He was a um, uh, H-53 crew chief. He worked on the, on the helicopters on an aircraft carrier. And man, those helicopters, we went to the, we went to the Norfolk Naval Base and those, uh, those aircraft carriers are amazing. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to, I want you to destroy an aircraft carrier. And what I want you to do is get in a rowboat, row out to it and smack it as hard as you can with your hand. And what are you doing to it? Okay, I'll tell you what you do. Get on a railroad track, a train is coming, and you've seen Superman do it. So I just want you to really brace yourself good. And these guys are really in for shock. <laughs> Can you stop it? It will hit you and not even slow down. Isn't that true? You cannot, you cannot stop a moving train. You can't hurt a ship like that. You couldn't hurt a small ship. Go get a rowboat and slap it. You're not even going to sink it. Isn't that true? Right. How are you going to do something bad in heaven? There is nothing that we can do that, that, that is negative. Now, guys, you don't need any, you don't need any uh, lessons in sin. You don't need any practice. But we all do it. And we go, oh, yeah, my sin hurts God. God's having a great time. God is having a great time, and it says your sin can't hurt him. Nothing about our sin affects God in a negative way. Um, now, he gets fed up with it. Uh, Genesis 7, he got a little fed up with it. Uh, Genesis 18, Sodom, Gomorrah, and, and the other three, uh, he, got, he got a little fed up with it. But nothing that we can do negatively can hurt God. And Jesus didn't come uh, and die for our sins because we were hurting Him. It wasn't, it, God was not in heaven saying, oh, I can't stand the pain. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, you know, some of the guys, and I'm, I'm for winning souls, I really am, but some of these guys, they give this, uh, this impression of God up in heaven going, oh, please get saved. You need to get saved because if you don't get saved, you're going to go to hell. Are you kidding me? You know, you know how I view God talking to somebody that's not saved? Um, on uh, August 6th, 1945, the Enola Gay flew over Hiroshima, Japan, and dropped the first atomic bomb in, in history. Wiped out, uh, oh, I think about 70,000, 80,000 people. Uh, three days later, on August 9th, they dropped the second atomic bomb. Uh, actually, it was, uh, I'm trying to think of uh, what the city was supposed to be, and it was clouded over, so they, they got the second one, Nagasaki. And that killed about 70,000 people. Now, do you think this happened? When they dropped that second atomic bomb, do you think the United States called the Japanese and said, Oh, please, we, we, we sure hope you'll surrender because, because we don't want to have to blow you up again. <laughs> you think maybe somebody called Japan and said, Want to see another mushroom? <laughs> well, that's the truth. That's the truth. We... God didn't do anything because our sin was hurting him. My sin can't hurt him. You know one of the stupidest things people do, especially when they're Christians? You know when you're mad at somebody, you try to hurt what they love? So if you think you love their car, you scratch their car. And if you think they, they love their house, you, you, uh, you, know, you throw something at the house. If you think you love them, you strip down the underwear and hit them with a hammer. I don't, I don't know why I thought that. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> I was telling, uh, I, was telling I was having breakfast and and uh, I was telling Brother Paul and, and Kevin I had breakfast this morning, and I we were in a church. I can't remember where it was, but we left. We had, it was the first vehicle. We had a one-ton Ford van pulling a 35-foot trailer. And if you guys know anything about, about mechanical stuff, when your universals are gone bad, the drive shaft will clunk, 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 clunk. And I'm getting that clunk, clunk. I thought, that don't that make sense, you know? And it was so bad, it sounded like it was going to go at any time. Usually I would get to an off-ramp, but I just pulled it off. And so I, I, I skid underneath the 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 van, and I'm, that, this thing is tight. There is nothing wrong. And my sweet wife, my non-mechanical wife, is standing at the left rear wheel of the van, and she goes, this is so cute. Could this be it? It's like, it's a, it's a one-ton, it's got eight lugs, 
four of, or four of the studs were snapped clear off, <laughs> and four others were loosened that far. Somebody at the church, hard to believe, didn't like me, and, and loosened the lug nuts. Well, okay, so what do you think happened in heaven over that? Nothing. Nothing. Well, yeah, but you would have gone to preach. But nothing happened. If we'd have got killed, nothing would have happened. Nothing we can do negative can hurt God. Look what it says in verse six, 7. If thou be righteous, what givest thou him? Or what receiveth he of thine hand? You know, the Bible says, and, and, and it's not rhetorical. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Actually, he just owns every single cow. And every now and then he sacrifices one. You know, back in the Old Testament, they sacrificed them to him. New Testament, he sacrificed them for me. We call it, they, that was a sacrifice, we call it hamburger, okay? <laughs> Sometimes we call it T-bone. I'm sorry, we don't call it tongue. Yeah. I had somebody say, would you ever have a cow tongue? I said, do you, do you know how many parts of a cow you can eat before you have to get to the tongue? <laughs> I said, I usually start way back here in the hind quarter, and I'm, I'm full way before I get to the tongue. All right? But what can you, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. How can you make, like heaven is bright with his light. Can you make it brighter? I, God has all of the wealth of the universe. How are you going to add to his bank account? What are you going to do? That he's going to say, wow, I was having a bummer of a day, and they called me and said hi. We can't add to God. Our, our evil cannot take from him. Our good cannot add to him. We can't impact him in a negative way. You know, we were looking, I think it was last night or the, uh, the night before, uh, about, I think it was Sunday, uh, about uh, Saul, before he got, Paul, Paul, before he got saved, he was Saul. And what did it say? He was wreaking havoc of the churches. It said, look, I want to show you something. Look at, look at Revelation chapter 4. At Revelation chapter 4, I think this verse is definitive. I think this is the most important verse in the Bible. I think that if you ever said to yourself, why am I here? This verse is the answer. Uh, the last verse in chapter 4, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. But now let's back up and, and look at what's going on in heaven as I speak to you. Um, oh, let's start about verse 4 because it's all good. This is most Bible, some of you are going to read today anyway. Uh, and round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in, in white raiment, uh, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. Uh, and out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Uh, and before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal in the midst of the throne, and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast had, uh, was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man, the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts uh, had each of them six wings about him, uh, and they were full of eyes within, uh, and they rest day and night, uh, they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is to come. Now, Holy, 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 God, God, Lord, Lord God Almighty, which was and is to come. Man, I did that in 10 seconds. Does that mean they could pop that off six times in a minute? No. You know why? Because when they do their 10-second act, then something else happens. Look at verse 9. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to, to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne, and worship him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure 
they are and were created. That, I timed it. The first thing that they say, and then the guys cast their crowns, and then they say, Thou art worthy of the Lord. Whole thing, if you talk slow, 30 seconds. Which means God is getting that praise twice every minute of the day. Now, you think when Paul was wreaking havoc at the churches of Jerusalem, those guys went, holy cow, look what he's doing. <laughs> you think they put a hold on this? No, no, there's nothing, nothing they could do. Now, I got to tell you this. I told you, I told you, I see humor where there may not be any humor. Leave me alone, I'm really having a good time. Uh, the question, you know what the question is? These four and twenty elders, they cast their crowns at his feet, right? Okay. Thirty seconds later, they get another crown on their head. They reload it. How'd they get the crown? Okay. Did they throw the crown down and then when they got done, pick it back up and put it on? And then thirty seconds later, throw it down again and pick it back up? Or do they have a box of crowns? Which they throw a crown, which I think if that's true, you got to have like a crown drain. <laughs> and then, and then there was a bowler in the crowd. And he said, What about a crown return? <laughs> <laughs> Thou art worthy, O Lord, in glory and iron power, for thus great old things, and for thy pleasure they are, were created. <laughs> Thou art worthy, O Lord. <laughs> I don't know. All I know is that. Twice every minute of the day. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if a car breaks down alongside the road tomorrow. I'm sorry if it catches fire and burns up. I'm sorry if somebody shoots you. But this will pe keep going on. Because there's nothing bad. And, and let me ask you a question. How can you make it better? Well, I can add to his praise. Oh, from a dirt ball. <laughs> He's going to be excited about a dirt ball saying something? I mean, look, I, I think we should praise him. I really do. But these are sinless beings that he created and they're doing exactly what he wants them to do and they never let him down. Come on, we've all let him down. So guys, there is nothing we can do that can hurt him. There is nothing we can do to add to him. Uh, I don't believe this. I don't believe there's any deficiencies in heaven that your arrival will amend. If you are a plumber, I don't think they're going to go, oh man, are we glad you're here. <laughs> Uh, if you're a cook, well, we're finally going to get rid of the microwave dinners. Well, your electrician, they get, you, well, it has been around a long time. It probably, it's probably ball and knob, bare wire. They need some do good stuff here. Guys, there is nothing. When you and I get to heaven, property values are not going up. You are not a valued employee. Do not. And we're in this age where, oh, well, you're important. I'm, I'm going through Walmart the other day. And it used to be they'd play some, you know, Muzak, that elevator music stuff. Now they're, they're tuned into some rock and roll, stupid uh, radio station. And this woman comes on. And it's kind of your, your 60 seconds of positive thinking. And, and I'm walking through that and she goes, you're very important. You can do something no one else can do. That makes you very important. And I thought, well, what if the one thing I can do that anybody else is rob a bank? <laughs> what a cheat on my taxes, you know? I mean, and, and but that is where we live. Everything about you is important. Nothing about you is important. You can't hurt him. You can't help him. You can't make him poor. You can't make him rich. You can't make him cry. You can't make him laugh. Nothing about it. We cannot alter the steady state of heaven by anything that we do. That's what the book says. So why is it all about you? I, I say this. Our sins, you know what they're like? They'd be more like a fly buzzing around his head. You ever have a fly? You know flies... Beelzebub means the Lord of Flies. And if you're a preacher, you understand what that means. Because if there's one fly in the room, he comes right here. And man, they will drive. Now, I was in New Guinea. And I'm preaching and something flew in. Not a fly. 
and it came in and landed here. I mean, I'm, I felt like somebody parked a Buick there. I'm talking, and I don't, so why don't you fly, oh no, we don't want to make this thing mad. <laughs> Whatever it is, we're going to let it alone. It hasn't bit through the shirt yet, we're okay. But you ever watch a fly go after a preacher when he's preaching? I had a fly one time. I am pretty sure that in a former life he was a geometry teacher. <laughs> because he posted himself right about here and flew geometric patterns. He'd go, mm. And I'm going, so the Bible says. <laughs> oh, that fly going to hurt you? That fly can't hurt you. It can't do anything for you. Okay, tell what you do. Choose today to not live for God. The Christians that are not living for God, I don't care what they say, well, it was because of what I went through when I was a kid, or I was traumatized, or I got mistreated. No, oh, yeah, play the violin. So quit serving God. And how are you going to hurt him? Yeah, you can't hurt him. What do I say? You try to hurt what he loves. Nobody he loves, he loves you. So you know what you do? You take a ball peen hammer, go, bong, bong. Well, I'm showing him. Bong, bong, bong. Oh, yeah, he can't take much over this. Oh, yeah, he must really, he must really, well, he's, he's really close to the end of his endurance. Now, guys, everything you choose, you choose not to live for him, and it won't make him poor. You choose to live for him, and it won't make him one penny richer. We can't, we can't do anything bad to hurt him. We can't do anything good. So what, are, what is this? Uh, we add nothing to him. Now, I do believe this. I believe that everything, like it said there in uh, Revelation chapter 4, verse 11, I think everything is here to put a smile on his face. But if you put a smile on his face, it doesn't add to him. It doesn't make him rich. Uh, I think this. I think even sometimes our soul winning is a little, a little misaimed because it is man-centric. You're going to hell, and I'm here so you don't have to go there. Well, how about this? You were put on the planet to, to put a smile on the face of your creator, and if you'll trust Jesus Christ in it right now, you'll finally be in a position to do that. That is a good reason. It makes God the center. So you can't add to him, you can't take from him. What is the conclusion? First off, our God is immensely merciful. Amen. Immensely merciful. You know every negative thing you do, the only person that hurts is you. Because it can't hurt him. It can't hurt him. Oh, you might hurt another human like yourself. But you can't hurt him. And I know people, they want to do terrible things because they hate God. And they can't, look, they can't shoot a hole in a cloud. They can't do one thing that hurts him. And we can't do one thing. But let me ask you this, are you saved? Okay, going to spend eternity in heaven? Then, then every bad thing you do will not hurt him. Who's it going to hurt? It's a, you're, you're the only victim of your crime. You are the only one that is going to suffer for not living for him. And I know, you know, you can get, uh, you can get down here and get into sin and, and it can destroy your life. Or you could just live good. You know, there are people, I don't, I don't think everybody is either living for God or the devil. There's a third entity here, self. And there's a lot of Christians, they're not evil, they're not doing horrible things, they're not going out and getting drunk or shooting people or, or breaking the law, they're just enjoying life. America is Disney World and I'm just on a ride today. But they're not doing anything for God. And when they get there, they're going to answer for everything they did in their body. It's not going to hurt God. What do you want? You, you, you take a bag of gold up to him? You can't hurt him. So... It is all about you because every negative thing you do can only hurt you. And it's all about you because every positive thing you do, everything you do for God, you're the only one that gains from it. He gains nothing. You can't make him richer. You can't add to him. So everything you do for God is only for you. Now think about this. When Jesus Christ, he didn't have to let Jesus Christ die for you. I mean, what? Heaven wouldn't be heaven with a bunch of mud balls running around? Again, we're not going to add anything to heaven. It was just his mercy so that he could save you, 
so that now that you got, you're saved, you can make a choice so that you can get something. Because <laughs> it's not about Him. It is literally this plan that the Lord has figured out. It's all about us. We're the only ones that suffer from our bad acts. We're the only ones that, that benefit from our good ones. We can't hurt him. We can't help him. We can't take from him. We can't add to him. It is this. Everything he did is for us. So he is immensely merciful because our salvation is so we don't have to suffer eternally. Correct? And he's immensely gracious because now what we do, we can have rewards forever. Is that not true? What a God. What a God. I mean, what was he thinking? Did you ever stop thinking? You know, I don't, I don't know how you feel about this. Because I'm sorry. Even we who don't subscribe to the all it's, about, it's all about me philosophy, you know, the one I'm talking about the worlds, we still kind of think that. You know, like the rapture is just to get me out of here. And God should do something for me. You know, and, and, and everybody, like right now, you know, God is going to save us with the next election. Why? Well, because I'm here. That's what everybody thinks. It is all about me. But if you think about this, if he gains nothing, from his point of view, the cross makes no sense. He didn't lose a son because he is back with him. But he did have a son suffer. So he could get something? No. Because he can't get anything. Now when you win somebody and you, they live holy... Does he, if he gets the worship, he's worthy of that, is he not? But if you don't give him the wor worship, he's still worthy. And he's not, he's not going to be less God. We're not going to tarnish him. We're not going to shine him. He is, he is just untouchable. We can't hurt him with our bad, and we can't, we can't add to him with our good. So what did he do with this thing at the cross? Keep us out of hell. That is the maximum mercy. I told you yesterday, mercy is not getting the bad you deserve. I'll tell you, I'll tell you something happened. And it happened before I got saved. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm about to, I'll be about to make a statement. I'm going to tell you not, not to say amen. Because you're going to want to say amen. And I, honest guys, I don't like preachers that mislead people to make them say something that's wrong. All right? Uh, it was about a year before I got saved, and uh, four of us were in a bar, 1.30 in the morning, we're all drunk, we got in this Mustang, uh, the guy that owned them was driving, uh, there was a guy and his wife, she was sitting on the council, he was sitting in the front, a friend of mine's on the left, I'm in the back, right rear, raining, and we're all drunk, and the guy that had this uh, 68 Mustang, we were out on a, on a, on a road, two-lane road out by a lake, and it is really coming down, and he has got this thing hammered. It's a long straightaway, and he's just got this thing down to the floor. When we got to the end of that straightaway, the road made a left, and we made most of a left. Not all of a left. We made the left about 20 feet a little beyond where the road did. Uh, and, and I remember getting bounced around, bounced around, and I, uh, I got busted up pretty good in that wreck. It, came, it, ended, up, it ended up on the right side. Um, the guy was half in, half out. They gave him eight hours to live. He did survive. And he and I were the ones that were, were busted up the most. And I talked to the, the insurance guy came over, and he said this. He said, the only thing we salvaged from that car was a spare tire. He said, what you guys did, he said, for 40 feet, that's about as long as this room maybe, for 40 feet you peeled a, a big concrete culvert. You just peeled it like a sardine can. And at the end of it was a storm sewer, like a chimney with a manhole cover. You've seen them? And he said, when you hit that, it shattered, and you guys tumbled end over end, and then side over side. And we ended up uh, pretty close to where we were supposed to be on the road, just not on the proper side of the car. Now, don't say amen here. Don't say amen to what I'm about to say. I was lost at this time. And here's what we tend to say if you were in a situation like that before you got saved. But for the grace of God, I didn't go to hell. No, no, no but for the mercy of God. See, if I'd have died that night, I'd have gone to hell, right? But isn't that what I deserve? So I didn't die. I didn't go to hell 
So I didn't get the bad I deserved. That was not the grace of God. That was the mercy of God. But on June 14th, just a little over a year later, I went forward to King James Bible believing Baptist Church like this and got down to my knees and I trusted Jesus Christ and I got some salvation that I don't deserve even now. So you know what? Mercy is not getting the bad we deserve. Aren't you glad you never got the bad you deserve? Are you saved? Yeah, yeah but you don't deserve it. You got good that you don't deserve, so you're saved by grace. Yeah. And it is all for us. He, he did not say, oh man, if I don't get these guys to heaven, I, I don't know what I'll do. You know what he says? You get this thing, oh, they're going to go to hell. God, oh, God. You know what he said? Psalm 2. He said, I'll laugh at them. He said, I'll drop kick them in hell. I'll laugh at their, I'll laugh at their derision. That doesn't sound, well, he sounds like he's very cruel. He's not very cruel at all. He's righteous. And some of you are tired of the unrighteousness you're seeing in this country. And think about this. If a dirt ball can be upset by what's going on in this country, what do you think he thinks? But we're not hurting him. They could line us up, shoot us. Oh, look, they're killing the Christians. He's going to stop it. Why? Why? Is it like heaven's leaking now? Like something's wrong in heaven? No. Nobody on this planet can do anything bad to him. Nobody on this planet can do anything good to him, which means that Everything we do bad only hurts us. And everything we do good only benefits from us, for us. Now think about a God that came up with a plan like that. A plan where he gains nothing. And let me ask you, because I believe this, okay? I know the Bible says the blood of bulls and goats cannot take away sin, right? But didn't the God that inspired that verse, couldn't he have been inspired to say, yeah, let it just be the bloods of bulls and goats. I mean, really, guys, his son. I don't think, not only do I think I'm not worth that payment, I think all of us in this room aren't worth that payment. I think all of Christianity across time who's been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, all of our corporate value together are not worth a drop of the blood. And when Jesus Christ got down in the garden and said, would you please, please, would you just let this cup pass for me? If he'd have said, yeah, son, come on home and just let him go to hell. He'd have been a righteous God when he did it. And he would have lost nothing. But why didn't he do it? So you didn't have to go to hell. It was all about you. And then once you got saved, guys, isn't getting saved enough? You know, I say this, uh, and, and um, I believe this. I, I might have said this here. I don't know that I thought about the people who got saved young, got the best testimony. Did I say it here? Okay. And, and I say it this way. Some of us got found in a ditch. And if you were in the ditch when he found you, isn't this true? If he'd have saved you and left you in the mess you were in, wouldn't you be better for the experience? I don't know anybody did that with. You know, I, I can tell you this. I, uh, I write my books on a computer. I use a word processing program. You know you can't buy a word processing program? You can't buy a word processing program. Oh, yeah, you can. No, you can't. No, you can't. Oh, yeah, you can. No, you can't. You buy a suite. You don't get a word processing program. It usually comes a package of five programs. It's like uh, a word processing program, a database, a uh, spreadsheet, uh, a presentation type thing, and something else. Something else. Chocolate chip cookie recipes, I don't know. <laughs> and all I want is the word processing program. I don't use the other four for anything. And so I gotta buy four things that I don't even want, not gonna use, but I want the word processing program. So, but it's okay, because when I put it in my computer, I still use a disk. Yes. Yes, it's made out of stone, but it's a disk. <laughs> I put it in my computer, and you know what it says? Now, if you only want one of these programs, just Check it, and we'll only put that one in your computer. Well, that's exactly what I want. Or if you want two or three or four, check the ones you want, and we'll only load the ones you want. We won't load the ones you don't want. Man, that is wonderful. I check, load them all. You say, why? You mean you load programs on your computer you won't use? Yep. Why? There's just something about knowing you got it all. <laughs> Really? 
I would feel deprived if those four programs were sitting in my, sh in, my, in my drawer, in my desk, on a shelf somewhere. I would feel deprived that I didn't have them, those programs that I'm never going to use. I just like knowing I got them. You know what I've never done? I've never run into not one Christian in 52 years. But I said, when you got saved, you get saved? Sure did. Well, uh, Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things passed away, behold, all things become new. Uh, did he give you new life? I've never, never had anybody say, uh, you, you know, I, I didn't download that part. <laughs> uh, when, when he saved you, did he make you a son? Oh, you know what? I, I wasn't interested in being a son. Guys, I wasn't interested in being a son. I didn't know I was going to be a son when I got down on my knees, if somebody would have said when I came forward, hey, ask him when you're done with this if you'll be a son of God. And if I said, well, I wouldn't even a question I could come up with. And I'd say, look, when I'm done praying, am I going to be going to heaven? Yeah. Will I be a son of God? And if they'd have said no, I wouldn't have said, well, just forget it. Yeah. But it just kind of came with the, it came with the disc. Yeah. I never found anybody. Didn't download the whole thing. Yeah. Isn't that good? Yeah. And he gets nothing. He gets nothing. And I'm looking at people, one of these days you're going to stand in front of Jesus Christ, and you know what you're going to get? You're going to get what you're going to get. Were you messed up, you know, if you decided just to live in the world and, and, and maybe try to hurt Him, whatever? Okay, you'll answer for the things done in the body. And if you try to serve him and pass tracts and win people to Christ and come to church and change some things in your life, he still doesn't gain anything. But man, is he going to reward you. Guys, the cross and everything connected with it, in his mind, it was all about us. That, that I'd say it knocks my socks off, but I still got them on. But they want to fall off. They want to fall off bad. If I could do a backflip right now, I'd do it right here. I really would. This God benefits nothing from letting his son suffer and die on a cross for a piece of trash like me. And then lets me get behind a pulpit and open up this holy book and talk to people. What is this about? It's about me. This is some God. I'd like you to stand with your heads bowed. Our sin only affects us. Our good works only benefit us. Our salvation only keeps us out of hell. And our, His grace and our serving Him only gains rewards for us. And I don't know, guys. I don't think anybody, any of us have ever been loved like that. You know, I always say this. There's two kinds of sin. Not mortal and venial. You know what two kinds of sin are? The sins you brag about and the sins you're ashamed of. And I remember being in a bar when I was a lost guy. Man, did we sit around the table and brag about our sins. And I remember as a lost man, as a heathen with no hope, while I was bragging about my sins, I knew things about myself. I didn't want anybody at that table to find out about I say it this way, guys. If the person standing next to you right now knew about you what you know about yourself, they would move over. Not because they're better than you. They would just feel better about it. But you're the only one that knows that, except Jesus Christ knew that when he went to the cross and still went, that is love. Don't you ever question his love. He knew everything about me and still went to the cross. Because it's all about me. It's all about you. Guys, this is some God. And so I'm going to have a word of prayer and the piano is going to play and maybe somebody maybe somebody wants to talk to this God and thank Him for this plan that it's all about us. Maybe you want to thank Him for the mercy. Maybe you didn't die alongside a road one time and His mercy kept you out of hell. And then He saved you and He gave you more than just a ticket out of hell. He gave you a new life. He gave you direction. He gave you purpose. He gave you value. You know, somebody told me one time there's no 
fun in sin. I said, man, I had fun in sin. I just never had peace. I never had joy. I never had satisfaction. I got, I have fun now, and I got the rest of it too. Why? Because of Him. Because it's all about me. Lord God, thank You so much. I'm not worth Your attention. And I think I'm the worst person in this room. But these folks here, I don't mean this in any disparaging way to the people in this room, God. But they're not worth your attention either. And had you told your son, come on home and let him go to hell, we'd be on our way to hell right now, just getting the bad we deserve. And when we dropped into hell one by one, nothing would have changed those beasts still would have cried out, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was, which is, and which is to come. And those four and twenty elders still would have cast their thrones at your feet, as they've done two times per minute while I've been speaking tonight. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. Thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. You are untouchable for good or bad by us, which means everything down here is about us. We can ruin our lives. We can make our eternity poor. Or we can enrich our lives. And we can do things that in eternity we'll be so glad we did something for you. But you really did this all for us. And paid a price far beyond our value. Far beyond our worth. Dear God, thank you for being the good God you are. You are, you are wonderful. You really are. The book says you are wonderful and you are. Maybe before we leave here, somebody just wants to get on their knees and say, thank you, God, for being the God that you are. Thanks for making it all about me. Thank you, God, for your mercy, and thank you for your grace. Maybe somebody here needs to start living so that when they get on the other side, they won't want to kick themselves for the time they wasted. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.